This video is going to show us how to take a three-dimensional custom line style in our a video example you might have watched previously was a three-dimensional guardrail and how to incorporate that into a workspace for the Open Roads technology. And so I'm working in Power Geopack Select Series 3. It doesn't really matter what version you're in, the process is the same. The first thing we want to do is we want to create element templates for our guardrail and I'm going to do that for surface components so I'll expand down in our examples workspace and I'm going to make a new component here our new element template for our component so we'll click on here and we'll select new template and I'm going to call this road left guardrail 3D and the level is going to be road guardrail and we'll do by level on the color and the line style which we created in part one is going to be and then for our weight we'll use by level and then I'm going to go ahead and add primary class because we'll be doing some stuff with a construction class and then we want to add a material and I'm just going to utilize the Bentley Civil one we have in here for guardrail post select that and then what we want to do then is repeat this process for the right side so we'll do a right click copy and then we need to come back up to the top folder and then we can paste and we'll rename this one this will be right side of course and then we, all we need to do here is to change the line style. So that's pretty much all we need to do for the element templates. Now one thing I like to do when I make new element templates is when I'm done just on the folder do a right click and select sort children and that puts them back alphabetically in order. <clears throat> so we have the road right guardrail 3D and we have the road left guardrail 3D. So we'll close that out. So that's the element template creation. The next thing we need to do then is to create our feature definition. So again while we're still in our feature definitions DGN library I'm going to go ahead and pin Project Explorer and Element Information and I'm going to go down to our feature defs and since we're going to be essentially drawing our guardrail in our 2D linear world and let the model happen automatically I'm going to do this under linear and I'm going to expand down under the roadway folder and just to, instead of starting from scratch we'll do a right click copy and then a right click paste and then I'm going to do that one more time so we'll copy and paste and so this is going to be named so 3D left and this one will be renamed three right so now that we have those renamed we can go in and modify those so this left side we'll call this guardrail left 3d for a name prefix we will be coming back later and picking a corridor template uh, to do the rail portion but right now we're just focused on the post and then the other thing that we need to change down here are the element templates for the cross sections and the 3D model so we'll come down here we'll go to our components folder and we'll pick our road left guardrail 3D and we can then just copy that into the clipboard and paste that down here. I'll tab out to accept that. 
and that takes care of everything on this feature except for the corridor template and then we'll do the same thing on the right side card row right 3D and then here and then that takes care of the right side. So at this point we have our element template created, we have our feature created, we're ready to now test this and make sure that our post are drawing properly and then we will proceed on then to our rail next. So now we can proceed to test. I have a 3D model here that we can practice with and I have the shoulder here set to automatically uh, create the 3D when the corridor is made and so I can take advantage of that so I select my feature row guard rail 3D right make that the active feature turn on the auto create 3D and I simply then go to my task and I'm going to use the single offset partial and touch my shoulder line and I'm just going to accept 0.3 meter offset and then we'll specify a start and stop location to test this and then you can see we have our post showing up properly and then we'll test our other side, our left side of the road so we'll do the left and then we'll pick our shoulder and then we'll set up our start and stop station offset and then we have our left side post And so you'll see that that looks very good and at that point then we're ready to proceed with designing the rail portion now keep in mind your materials, I talked about that a little bit, um, why you don't have the galvanized steel appearance and it's got to do with the 3D custom line style rendering modules right now in MicroStation. I have been told that you can drop the 3D custom line style and then use something uh, like Luxology to do a render and so if you need to get that precise uh, you can. Now one thing that I want to kind of point out here is I in my 2D line work I did not show the post there I just showed a solid line that's just really depends on what feature you pick for your 2D view uh, I just kind of prefer that the solid line uh, there for the guardrail but you can you know do that however you want to based on how you set up that that plan view feature portion so with that uh, we're going to now move forward to uh, the last portion of this video where we're going to actually design the rail and implement that. Now that we've tested our post and we know that those are drawing properly in 3D, we now need to actually look at the rail portion. And I'm going to be utilizing what's in the examples workspace added in Select Series 3, Maintenance Release 3, some might be called Select Series 4, but we have this guardrail left rail and guardrail right rail. Now it looks like a complete guardrail but what I've done is strategically broken this up into two different features. If we take a look at the component features I have only the road guardrail nose portion assigned to the same surface feature as the post and the post themselves that are in the template I've made a different feature and on this feature it's pointing to an element template of construction class with a transparency set and you're going to see why we do this um, in just a minute but if we go back to our template here just to take a look uh, a couple things here on the point features as well to point out I did the same philosophy here is I did a basically a linear feature of drafting do not construct and you'll see the orange highlighted uh, points that I don't really care about. They're going to go on a construction class. I can turn them off. Um, but the ones that make up the actual th rail, I'm going to put those on a different feature, the same one that the rest of the guardrail is going to be on. The reason I broke up this post and block is that I can make basically what I call a guardrail wall so that no matter where I cut my cross sections if there's guardrail there I will see a guardrail in my cross sections and that's why I did it this way and it seems to work out quite well 
cost and by utilizing uh, construction class and transparencies in the element templates we we're able to achieve that quite nicely and so just to take a look at that if we go to our element templates and we look at what I assigned so we'll go down to components and it's just road guardrail post so you can see I have a transparency set and I also have construction class set so that's the surface feature I used on the template portion so <clears throat> the last thing that we have to change here is to assign a corridor template so on the left side we will assign the left guardrail which is here we'll assign that to there and then we'll pick the right side and we'll do the same thing for the right guardrail say OK to that and that's pretty much it for editing the features in the element templates and so we'll go ahead and save that out we'll go back to our project and what we'll need to do is we'll need to regenerate these so that this time we actually make a corridor so I'm going to delete these test lines off of here and again I'm going to pick my feature definition now because I modified the feature definition just to be safe I'm going to go in and delete the ones that it copied across so that it updates them so we'll delete that one and that one and it'll recreate them when we process so let's pick the left guardrail so again roadway road guardrail 3D left now this time <coughs> we must also enable the uh, icon to process a template so you have to have three icons enabled for this to actually work so the active feature auto create 3D which basically exactly copies the whatever profile is assigned to the element that we do the partial offset from and then last one is to create a corridor along there and so we'll come down now when and again this is pretty much the one command that you're going to be using a lot is the single offset partial for this one so we can pick our left shoulder and just use an offset of minus one meter here for our test we'll start it back here stop it up here somewhere and then we have our 3D guardrail so we'll say no to mirror and we'll switch over to our right guardrail and we'll pick our right shoulder and again I'll just come up here somewhere drag that out and allow that to process and so we come over here and look at our model now you're going to see we have a very nice looking 3D line style making up our post in conjunction with go ahead and conjunction with our template that makes up our rail now if we turn on our construction class here now you see we have our wall that is generated from the remaining portion of our template but we have that on construction class because it's a different component feature and so that works out really nicely the the guardrail wall for lack of a better phrase is what we will see when we cut our cross sections and so that's why this portion shows up because you're cutting through a 3D line style is not going to show up in your cross sections but if you cut through this meshed wall coming out of your template corridor uh, that it creates and that's essentially what it is creating it's creating a miniature corridor along that guardrail and processing that template then you can have your, cro your guardrail show up in your cross sections no matter where your cross sections are cut and you can see it's anatomically it looks correct or dimension standard wise and so that's how it works um, come in here typically you would you know leave your construction class off in your model to not see that but it's not going to affect uh, what's in your cross section because that's going to have your construction class on and then once these are placed um, then of course you can at any time come in and you know manipulate those if you want to you know strength you know lengthen those adjust the offsets whatever uh, they're just regular uh, single offset partial you know entities or geometry that you created and you can you know at any time you know make adjustments to that you can type in new value uh, whatever you want to do and see that uh, model update appropriately so that is how 
we take a three-dimensional line style and incorporate that line style with a couple of different tricks and utilize that for modeling. So the end user, all they have to do, pick the feature, turn on the three icons, use the single offset partial, and it works out very nicely. Hopefully this will help you in learning how to utilize this. Uh, one thing that you might want to check further is on our wiki page uh, for our road and site uh, design form there is a video out there on placing 3D guardrail and it shows how to place the guardrail around a tangent arc tangent combination and to be able to do that and not get the different breaks and, and maintain the appropriate post spacing so you might want to check that out as well.